Hey guys, I am back with another book review, but before I get into that, I would like to address some comments on a previous uh, video that I made. There are some of you who are asking for more Richard Lehman talk, and uh, that I promise you is coming up. I'm actually reading one of his books now, and uh, it's been a while since I've read Richard Lehman. But it's always good to, for me anyway, to reread his material. I, I like most of his stuff. Uh, he does have some duds out there. But I, I like the majority of his work that I've read. And I haven't read all of his work, but I, I've read the majority. If you scroll down and find my Richard Lehman Collection video, uh, I, I read all those books. Plus three or four that I actually don't own that I have either... I bought on ebook or rented from the library but yes uh, Richard Lehman talk will be coming up shortly uh, can't wait to get back into him and uh, that should be exciting plus I have two books of his that I really think is appropriate for October so I will be reading those and hopefully talking about them in the greatest month of all my favorite October uh, but on to tonight's subject and tonight's subject is, uh, well, anyway, it's called One for the Road by Wesley Southard. And this is from Dead Eye Press, as you all know, or should know by now. I love Dead Eye Press. I love all the stuff they put out. And it's very slim, 94 pages. And, uh... I read this like a week ago, and I actually posted a video um, that was in the can for a while, but I just didn't like, I don't know, I'm a perfectionist, and I hated the way I was talking and fumbling over words and stuff, but, you know, it's got to be forgiven, because if I'm too much of a perfectionist, none of these things will ever get released, but I, actually it worked out, because I deleted the video, and this book, I wanted to kind of sink in whereas the first video i had closed the book turned the camera on and started talking but i think it benefits me more that i i let it kind of sink in and swirl around in a dome for a little while to discuss it because it is a good book and it deserves uh it deserves mentioning so let's get into the story and i took some notes down because as i said it was a week ago but um just wanted to make sure i I discussed it thoroughly for you guys. So, we are introduced to Spencer Heston. He is in a band called Rot in Hell. And he has become quite disenchanted with the band. He He's not excited about it anymore. Uh, he, he wants out. And his drummer, Vinny, shares those thoughts. They kind of want to break away. And they want to start their own thing. Uh, they want to get away from the metal, and they want to do, I think they mentioned jazz or something like this. They just want to do something different. So, now this is all unknown to the rest of the band. The rest of the band doesn't know this. But, this is almost like Spencer's diary. And we are reading his account of what follows in this book, and uh, we don't know where he's writing it or or what i mean we know he's alive because he's telling us a story but uh you later find out where he's writing it and, and it makes sense so they are rotten hell are on their their la the last leg of their tour and this is when spencer and Vinny are really planning on their 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 other band they're really excited but the stinger the the singer steve he he doesn't know about this and Steve has this girlfriend, Shelly, who is kind of uh, flirting with Spencer. And we later found out that they're actually engaged in a uh, relationship. Uh, that is very unknown to Steve. And then we have uh, Les, the, the bass player. And this weird guy named D-Rail, who is like a roadie slash bodyguard to Steve. He doesn't talk. He doesn't really utter a sound. He's just there, which is kind of creepy and odd. But anyway, they, they're on their last leg of this tour. They're in a bar, 
and they have some drinks and and they're having a, a good time and uh the next day they wake up inexplicably in a different plane of existence uh different world i don't know if it's hell it could be hell uh but it's it's hard to tell why they got there and spencer mentions that he has no clue how they got there they're all uh they're all just as good uh, as confused as they're all very confused all of them so this different world that they're in it's it's very odd the landscapes change repeatedly uh they start out in a desert then it then they kind of walk into or it changes into like a, a forest lush with green vegetation for miles and miles and then in another scene, it's completely icy and snowy and cold. And it's very weird. And the inhabitants of this other world are monsters and creatures. And there are spiders with human fingers and little creepy creatures. Um, there's another creature, too, that kind of comes at the end of the book, but I don't want to give it away because... I, I think it would give it away if I talked about that creature. I'd give some of the plot or plot point away. But yeah, this is definitely not, this is definitely not a world of our own. It is something completely different. And they're just trying to survive and figure out how the hell they got there. And of course, there is some bickering. <laughs> they uh, and, and that's what I liked about, about the, the band themselves, because I was in a band. And I know how it, it could feel like a marriage. Uh, I, I, you become distant from other band members, or uh, you know, one of the band members, you know, gets has a bigger ego than the rest, and you know, things happen. Uh, luckily, I didn't have all that. I didn't have those problems with my band. We all got along pretty well. But I, I do understand the characters are very relatable in that aspect of being on the road together, getting sick and tired of one another. And to tell you the truth, Steve, the lead singer, uh, he is a complete, um, I don't know, he's narcissistic, he's an asshole, not a very likable guy, although I like the way he was written, um, because every time he speaks, you just want to slam your face, uh, your fist in his face, so I like that. The writer kind of conveyed his, uh, that character very well. And uh, when you when you have a raw reaction like that, the writer's doing something right, um, you know, because you like the, you like the characters that are likable, and you want to dislike the characters that are dislikable. And Steve is very dislikable, so they're they're going on and on and on, and some of them are picked off. Uh, that's you know that might be a spoiler, but hey, we're reading a horror novel. And um, I'm not giving too much away about the creatures and stuff because there's a lot of it on the back anyway. The description on the, the synopsis on the back. So, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of that. I mean, I'm not giving too much away. But uh, they're just stuck in this world. And, you know, they don't really, they don't know how they, get, they got there. We don't know how they got there. And the ending, the ending doesn't really, um, how do I say, kind of close those gaps either. Because it's still like a little mystery. Um, I don't want to say it's hell because Steve is writing his account. It's like his diary. So if it were hell, maybe he escaped. But I'm not sure why he belonged in there in the first place. I mean, he's not perfect, but um, there's no real reason for him to die and go to hell. There is a quick mention of Steve killing someone the night before. But again, I don't know how they would all end up in hell. Because Steve definitely deserves to be in hell. But uh, the rest of the guys, they're just happy playing music and stuff. I liked, I also liked, uh, back to the characters, I also liked the character of Shelly, who was playing both Steve and Spencer. 
She's obviously not happy with Steve, who, who really does treat her badly. But Spencer wants nothing to do with her. Um, aside from when he's drunk and, and, you know, ready to mingle, so to speak. But other than that, he doesn't really want to... He, she's just there. Uh, she's not really uh, all that important to any of the band members. And that being said, I still liked her character because... She is kind of playing both of them. And it just perpetuates Steve's jealousy and madness and gives him a, a greater story arc and, and kind of wants me... you know, Because I, I found Steve the most complex character and the most interesting because he was very unlikable. I just couldn't stand the guy. But I couldn't put the book down when he was... In, in the story, I couldn't put the book down when he was in the pages because I'm like, I want to just hear the off-the-wall crap this guy says. So yeah, this one is a good book. It's a short book. It's a very fast read. It's, uh, I think it's one of the times when I would say that this book could have been a bit longer, uh, maybe a bit more fleshed out. But on the other side of that of that token, I would say that Maybe the author, it was intended for us to kind of get things for ourselves, uh, not give everything away, the, uh, the old show-don't-tell kind of attitude in storytelling, which he does show a lot, he doesn't tell a lot, and that's okay, but at the end of the book I was still a bit confused as to why they were even there. Like, I'm not sure. And, and there are scenes in this book where we, we know that Spencer will be fine. He isn't trapped in this place. It's just, I don't know, I don't even know if it should have been explained better. Because here I am talking about it and it's fascinating to me. Like I'm just thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, well maybe, maybe it's better that I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to know. And if I were sitting around with a bunch of other people, we would all have our own opinions, and that's great. Uh, because not everything is going to be uh, just handed to me on a silver platter with exposition. And, I, and I'm, I'm totally okay with that. So I'm not actually even criticizing that aspect of the book. Uh, yes, it is a little confusing, but not in like a disjointed, this guy can't write type of way. I'm not even saying that. Um, but just to wrap this up, one for the Road by Wesley Southard is really good. Uh, I would pick it up. It's not very expensive. Um, buy it on, buy it on uh, Kindle or your e-reader, whatever you choose to read your material on. Uh, or buy the physical book like I do. I love to buy physical copies of books. I love them on my shelf. I love to talk about them. But, um, yeah, well, I wasn't disappointed with the book at all. Uh, I thought it was a quick... Um, Short story, novella, and entertaining. And that's all you can really ask for. Uh, you can't ask for much else, right? Because it wasn't a bad book at all. And I will be reading more of this author's stuff. And I hope that some of you will check it out too. And let me know. If you have read it, let me know. Let's talk about books. Let's uh, get into the discussion. Um, because I, I find on YouTube, all these people that are talking about books... I think it's remarkable because there for a while it was actually frightening. I thought maybe books would be the next thing I love to go completely digital like music has, like movies have. And I do not want everything compiled on a little phone or a little iPod or a little, you know, anything. I want, I want to hold it. You know, I want the artist... I can appreciate the artist more when I have the artwork, when I have it in my hand, you know what I mean? Even, and this might be weird, the smell of a book is awesome to me. So let's keep that physical media alive, guys. So I like all the booktubers, or whatever we call them these days, the people who are talking about books. It's powerful. I love it. We need to keep doing that because it encourages other people to buy books as well. Like physical books. And I'm not saying buying e-readers, uh, buying an e-reader um, and getting your material is bad that way. It's just my opinion that the physical copy will always reign supreme. And uh, 
I'm just a grain of sand. It's just one opinion, you know, with many. But um, for better or worse, it is my opinion. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I know I, I've gotten a few other subscribers, and I, I'm completely uh, humbled by that. I didn't. I don't expect anybody to listen to this. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm glad that anybody who listens and anybody who's paying attention and who loves books, uh, you're coming to the right spot. And in other videos, I want to tell you about some of the people that I watch, which isn't many, but the ones that I watch, I am consistent with watching because they are very entertaining people who read the books that I want to read. So, and they turn me on to some of this stuff. And that's always good, man. That's good. Can't find it all yourself. But anyway, that has been my... My opinion on One for the Road by Wesley Southard um, that I press. Love that company. You know, I, I know I'm a broken record. But as always, I'm going to close out by saying live inside those pages because it's a lot better than reality. Unless, of course, you end up like rotten hell in a different dimension. That wouldn't be so cool now, would it? Anyway, please like, share, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. Let's uh let's start talking about books, man. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time very shortly. Take it easy.